Ontario Progressive Conservative leader Tim Hudak says the selection of a new premier hasn't resulted in a new direction for the Liberal government, and so he and his party are ready for an election. Let's find out why. Here's Tim Hudak, leader of the Ontario PC Party, MPP for Niagara West Glanbrook, and it's nice to have you back here at TVO. Thanks for having me back on the show, Steve. In that chair, a week ago, was the new premier of Ontario, and she talked about you. So I want She wanna, said nice things? Uh, well, you can be the judge of that. <laughs> Here's the clip, and then we'll come back and chat. Roll tape, please. Tim Hudak represents a constituency, and I don't mean his riding. I mean a constituency in the province that is, you know, is very focused on fiscal responsibility and wants to make sure that the government is going to pay attention to the bottom line. I'm not going to abandon that constituency because Tim Hudak doesn't want to work with but me in the But you won't be as house. austere as he wants you to be. Well, I won't be as austere as he wants him to be anyway. You know, even if he did want to work with me, we would have to find common ground. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to acquiesce to everything that Andrea Horvath wants us to do either. But what I am going to try to do, and I will continue to work out, to, reach out to Tim Hudak, you know. He said he doesn't want to work on the throne speech with us. Well, fair enough. But I'm still going to include him in a conversation about how do we now get to a budget. If he doesn't want to talk to me, Steve, then that's his prerogative. But I am going to be reaching out to him. She says she's going to continue to reach out. Is she wasting her time? Well, l listen, I mean, I, I think I've been very clear. I, I made every effort to try to get this province off the path that we're on. I mean, our debt is being run up at too fast a clip. We're um, last in, in jobs. We need to change things so Ontario is actually first in jobs and last in debt instead of the other way around. So I met with the Premier on a couple occasions. The conversations were warm. They're relaxed. Um, friendly. I just don't think we're going to see eye to eye on the issue. So if there are things that we can work on going forward that actually minimize damage, great. But Steve, I've come to the conclusion that we need actually to change the government in Ontario if we actually want Ontario to grow again and be a leader in Canada. And therefore you are going to vote against the throne speech, which you decided two minutes after it was written actually, or read I should say. It was pretty clear what path they chose. I, I mean I was hoping for something um, better. I was hoping for a realization of the deep fiscal hole that we're in, uh, that our economy is not performing where it should be. And I think we've made very strong efforts on the PC side in terms of our path to prosperity, the white papers we put out there. I made that case directly with Premier Wynne on a couple of occasions and follow-up correspondence, which you've hopefully had a chance to look at too. So we made the case. Ultimately, she chose to uh, entrench the McGuinty agenda. I, I think there's another path that actually gets Ontario back on top, a leader in Canada. She chose the status quo. Well, more on that different path in a second. But here's some of what she has put in the throne speech. Eliminating the deficit by 2017-18. I know you do it, you say, a year faster. But 2017-18 is where most people are at these days. Restricting spending increases to 1% below GDP growth until we return to our pre-recession debt-to-GDP ratio. Reducing young youth unemployment. Continuing to implement the Drummond Report. What can't you sign on to of all of that? You, you actually, I mean, I guess hope thinking and you know best wishes are, are nice to see but they're not going to get you to the deficit it's a, it's nice to see maybe a target down the road which is very much like the McGinty target be very direct about it but you actually have to give steps to get there so we want to balance the budget we think that Ontario should actually not be last in Canada to balance the budget so we put out our own plans on that eliminating corporate welfare to save two billion dollars a year eliminating the clean energy benefit, as Don Drummond recommended, of over a billion dollars there. We've had some decisions on education following Drummond recommendations, like postponing the expansion of full-day kindergarten until the books are balanced. We put out some bold and courageous ideas to get the books back in balance. What I didn't see was anything of the kind in the throne speech. In fact, it looked like they were increasing spending in some areas. And when you've maxed out the credit card, Steve, you don't go and get another one. You start making some tough choices to get things back in order. I want to take you back to whatever it was, 10 or 11 months ago, when there were all of those discussions around the budget. And you were, again, pretty categorical from the word go that you weren't going to support whatever the government was putting forward. And the allegation at that time was, Tim, you're marginalizing yourself. By always saying no, you're not a part of any conversations going forward, and you are inevitably putting the Liberals looking to the NDP for their survival. Uh, it, it looks like that's what's happening again. Are you concerned that once again you're going to be looking like the guy on the sidelines while the Liberals and the NDP are essentially getting stuff no, done? I just have a different view. I mean, if, if you got a car that's going over the, the cliff, you don't just ask it to, to slow down. You actually hit the brakes and you head the opposite direction. And I'm not willing to put more gas in that tank to take Ontario down the wrong course. I, I just sense that people are looking for change in our province. They know that we're 
um, the better days can actually lie ahead if we get our act together on balancing the books and bring an actual jobs plan that makes Ontario open for investment again. I had hoped to see that from Premier Wynne. I made every effort over the last number of months to put those ideas out there to try to convince her directly. I think she's more lined up with the McGuinty agenda. Uh, she's more lined up with where Andrew Horvath wants to go. I guess the good news is if you think that Ontario is on the right path, you have two parties to choose from now. Uh, I think we've been looking for change and we put our ideas out there. Well, maybe you, you may have seen some polls I have not seen, but the last poll I saw, which was at a forum, said since Kathleen Wynne took over, fewer people as opposed to more people want an election. More people as opposed to fewer people want this parliament to be given a chance to work. Uh, about as many people were as supportive of you last time as the time before. And you're actually running about 10 points behind your party in terms of your own personal popularity, whereas Kathleen Wynne and Andrea Horvath, for that matter, are both running ahead of their parties in terms of personal popularity. I know you know all this. So the question is where you, you keep saying people want to change, people are anxious to get rid of these guys. None of the numbers I have seen suggest that. What are you looking at? I'm looking at the urgency of the situation that's before us in the province. I mean, we're, we're teetering on a, a debt crisis. We all know interest rates are going to go up sooner or later. And, and Steve, if they do go up even one single percentage point, it's going to cost us $500 million right off the top to go to their overseas lenders, to Wall Street that could have gone into you know, putting a new drug on our formulary to help fight cancer, for example. The longer we delay, the more we put into jeopardy the frontline programs that we actually care about. The longer we delay, that means that companies that may be looking to North America to set up in um, health sciences, in manufacturing, they're going to go to Michigan or Indiana, Alberta, Saskatchewan. I've just come to the point where I'm worried about the direction our province is going. I think we're at a tipping point, and the time for action is now to turn this around. We can still do it, but the longer we delay, the harder that's going to be. You haven't closed the sale with two-thirds of the people in this province on that. Yeah, but I don't pass my judgment based on you know, what the latest poll has to say. That's not what leaders do. I mean, when you're in a crisis, and I believe we are facing, quite frankly, the biggest debt and jobs crisis of our lifetimes. So you don't tinker. You don't take small steps. You say boldly where you want to go and then confidently lead people out of the crisis. I've laid out that plan. I recognize my colleagues, Ms. Wynne and, and Ms. Horvath, don't agree with our plan, but I do believe that people want to see change. And the more they hear about our plan, lowering taxes, getting energy under control, doing more in the colleges to train the next generation of workers to take on the best in the world, they like what they see. Let me change the subject on you here and talk about the gas plant fiasco, which has been a central part of question period ever since the new government was put in place. Uh, you've come out now and said you want a judicial inquiry into all of this. How come? Well, uh, I mean, I did that with, after a lot of thinking. And my, my first best um, belief was that MPPs should get to the bottom of this. And that's why we've pursued the contempt hearing. Let's not forget what this is all about. I mean, this is about uh, about a billion three outside experts, not just me saying that, spent to cancel gas plants to save liberal seats in the last election campaign, compounded, Steve, by what looks to be an orchestrated cover-up on that information. I mean, this is very serious. So we'll proceed in the legislature. But the concern I have is we, we've seen the Premier now go back on her word to have a select committee to investigate this. We have seen more documents come forward and we are told all the documents were made public. I'm very worried that this government will never try to get to the bottom of this issue. They won't actually tell us the truth. That's why I said as Premier, if they honor serving as the next Premier, I will have a judicial inquiry, like the Gomery inquiry, to actually get to the bottom of this affair. If that were to happen, presumably part of the information that would go before that inquiry is the fact that you stood outside that plant in Mississauga during the last election campaign and said you'd cancel it too. Doesn't that mean there's, I, I hate to use this expression, but I can't think of a better one. There's kind of no virgins on this file, you know? Every, everybody's got a little bit of experience on this. But at the end of the day, it's taxpayers who are on the hook, and they want to have answers on this. Secondly, they want to know why information wasn't made public. The other thing, Steve, I mean, looking at the big picture beyond this, I mean, energy is a crucial part of our economic infrastructure. Businesses are going to invest in areas where they know that they don't have banana republic-type decisions happening. And if we want to send a signal to investors to put their business in Ontario or to grow our own, we need to have a plan around jobs. I've talked about some of our points, but a big part of that, too, is making sure this thing doesn't happen again. We're serious about this. Taxpayers are, and we'll pursue it. No argument there, but you would have canceled it as well. Well, let's be clear. I mean, I never would have built those plants. I objected to that from the beginning. 
uh, with respect to Mississauga. I mean, you're right. I was. Uh, the Liberals said they didn't need the plant. They said the environmental uh, act was uh, was offside, and they no longer needed the power. Uh, so I said, given those circumstances, then we wouldn't build the plant. Should I maybe have uh, held back to get all of the facts, maybe not judge the Liberals at face value? Fair enough point. The decision has been made to, first of all, open those plants, to carry them on, to invest dollars in that, and then to cover up information, which also signals to businesses and investors that Ontario is not taking its decision seriously. Let me, uh, let me ask you about that. Uh, Kathleen Wynne was co-chair of the Liberal campaign in 2011. Uh, as such, she was in on some meetings. She was not in on other meetings in her capacity in that role. She has said, I wasn't in on the meetings where the decision was made to cancel that plant. Uh, do you not take her at her word? I, I, listen, I, she has said, and, and I'll give her um, credit with that, that she will come before the committee and answer questions of members of all parties, which, to her credit, is more than the previous Premier said that he would do. And this is a chance to say, you know, who knew what when. Um, and this is not a matter of, of signaling out particular individuals. It's a matter of making sure we understand the total cost of the taxpayer, make sure we understand who made the decision to cover up documents and hold them responsible. Do you think she's holding out? Um, listen, I, there, we brought up some questions in question period about uh, emails that were sent her way in briefings. This is her chance um, to get the facts out. And I, I really hope, I think what's most important here, is I really hope that Premier Wynne will, will not go back on her word. She wrote a letter to myself and to Andrea Horvath on Valentine's Day, actually on February 14th, uh, saying that she wanted to hold a select committee. If she's good to her word, if she's truly different than the previous Premier, hold that select committee. Okay, let's talk about uh, beckoning the ballot box. By voting against the throne speech, and I'm going to go on a wild limb here and predict that you're going to vote against the budget too, my hunch is you're saying you have no confidence in this government and therefore it's time to go to the polls and pick a new government. Are you ready for an election? It, it, what's most important here is if we actually want to make Ontario the best place for jobs again, if we want to actually give hope to the 600,000 folks who will wake up tomorrow morning with no job to go to, um, I've come to the conclusion the only way to do that is to change the team that leads this province. Are we ready for it? Well, whenever it happens, I guess Andrea Horvath has indicated she will prop up the government until at least the budget comes out. She'll explain later on the show exactly why she's made a, the decision to prop up a government that is deeply tainted in scandal and on the wrong track. Fact, she's coming on right after you, Perfect. and I will ask her that There's question. There's her chance to do so. Um, but to me, Steve, no, I, we, we've made up our, our, our minds on this. I, and if we truly want to make Ontario the province that we know it can be, to give hope to those who have lost hope, I believe the only way to do so is to change the government. We put our plan out there, and whenever this happens, we're ready for it. There are some basics, like you have to have some money. Do, have you paid off the debt from the last election campaign yet? Appreciate all the concerns about the, the campaign <laughs> team concerned. and structure Deeply and, concerned. <laughs> and, and all that. But it goes beyond that. I just, I mean, and the question is, right, right now, um, throughout your show tonight, we will have gone $1.8 million deeper in debt. That's the clip at which we are spending more than we take in revenue. When Ontario, I asked, which... I asked about your debt, your party debt. You haven't paid it off. From, I don't think any of you have paid it off in the last election. Yet. Sure. Listen, and I appreciate the, the concerns about that. Whenever the election happens, we'll be ready for it. Most importantly, we've already put out a lot of ideas on how we're going to turn this province around and get, get back into balance. So it's not a matter of, you know, who's prepared and who's got office space rented and all that type of stuff. It's about who's actually going to bring the change that Ontario needs to realize that future for those who now are looking at other provinces. The notion that Ontario, that has always been the leader in immigration because it was a beacon around the world, I mean, that's where the Hudak family came from, too, that our immigration rates have dropped by 25% because people are looking to other provinces for that job. When I hear businesses closing up across the province, going across the border into the states, when, when I see Ontario is dead last in growth rates and income for people in the private sector, we need some change, Steve, and the longer we delay it, the tougher the job's going to be. Uh, I hear you, and you have, i got to tell you, very skillfully avoided answering the question twice already. Debt. So I'm going to try again. All three parties, as far as I know, still have debts from the 2011 election campaign still on their books. I don't know if you want to tell us how much you've got. I'm guessing it's probably in the order of two or three million bucks. I don't know the exact number. I mean, I'm not trying I'm to avoid the, the question. I'm just I'm, I'm just... in the ballpark, I bet. Have you got, I mean, I know you, you have put a plan out there. No argument there. You've put, you've got lots of policy out there to your credit. At the end of the day, though, before you get to do any of that, you do have to have money in the bank. You do have to have candidates nominated. You've got to know, you've got to have a schedule. Yeah. No, have I'm, you got listen, any I'm not, trying to, I'm not trying to avoid the question. All parties are in debt. So, I mean, yes, I'm just saying that that's not the decision point for me. I guess it would be easier as leader 
um, just look the other way. If, you know, if somebody's in trouble, sometimes it's easier to look the other way and keep walking down the street. We can't afford to do that when it comes to the debt crisis, the jobs crisis in the province. Uh, so whenever it happens, we'll be ready to go in the circumstances. Right. It's a year and a half, I guess, since the last election. But the most important thing to me, Steve, is if, if, when, when you're in a hole and the government of the day is going to dig it even deeper, do you just pick up a shovel and help, or do you actually fight to bring change? And if we truly want Ontario to be the province that you and I and your viewers know it can be, a leader again, not a have-not province, we need something new and different. We've got to change the team that leads it. Okay. I'm down to my last, I think, minute and change here. How, much, how am I doing on time? A couple of minutes. Okay. A uh, question of political strategy here. Uh, it can be argued that with the election of Kathleen Wynne, the Liberals have sort of moved a little bit further left along that political continuum to the point where, I mean, you said it earlier, you think that she and Andrea Horvath are going to be competing for center-left votes in the next election campaign. If that conventional wisdom is true, that presumably opens up a little more room in the middle. And yet I have noticed that you are staying very true to your principles, small c conservative, and you are, you've given no hints that you're going to move more over into the middle where, frankly, most of the electorate usually is. And I wonder if you're, I'm not, ask, I'm not saying it, I'm asking it, are you missing an opportunity to attract a bigger tent by staying further over here? This is the way I look at it. Um, there's no doubt that elections are always tough and, and there are random elements that, that come into play and I've got a lot of respect for my two colleagues in the other parties. So an election will be tough enough. Um, what's going to be more difficult is getting our province back on its feet. And that'll be the harder part of the job. That's what I've become convinced of. So that's why you need to actually have a comprehensive and integrated plan to turn this province around. It's not going to be easy. And anybody that comes on your show, Stephen, says they can balance a $12 billion deficit and not cut spending, I mean, they're either naive or they think that you are. It's not going to be easy, but there'll be benefits for all of us if we get through it. So the plan that we'll present to the voters, we've already presented a lot through a path to prosperity, be very much focused on making Ontario the best place for jobs, getting our fiscal house in order, and so doing the best public services for families in the province and individuals. But I'm telling you, the more difficult task will be governing. That's why we have a serious plan. So regardless of what your two political opponents do, you are where you are. You've got to hit the ground running, and, and there, there's no time to waste, and that's why I've, I've said, you know, I think we need a change uh, in, in government as well if we truly want Ontario to be on top. So I guess it would be easier to have a bland platform so the other guys are bad, vote for us, because I've got a nice smile or something like that, right? But we're, we're, I, I actually need um, a mandate to turn Ontario around. The challenges are significant. The longer it takes, the more daunting those challenges are. But, but I'm not going to throw things aside because I'm worried about the election. I actually have to turn this province around. Our plan will do so. That's Tim Hudak, Leader of the Opposition. As always, we thank you for coming into TVO and sharing your views with us. My pleasure. Thanks for the time. Support Ontario's public television. Donate at TVO.org.